science, the divine gift for the intellectual development of mankind, has undoubtedly established that thoughts are the creative product of the mind, which is at the service of the spirit in absolute integration. In the next talk Mr. by Mr. Luis Lima, entitled the Spiritual and Physical Dynamics of Thoughts and Emotions, we will scientifically explore the influence of our thought, emotions, and attitudes upon the physical body. Mr. Uh, Lima is a prominent spiritist lecturer, both in Portuguese and English, and he is a member of the Kardec Spirit Renovation Spiritist Center in Coconut Creek, Florida. Let's welcome Mr. Luis Lima. Thank you very much. We're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to do something more science-based. Uh, we've been speaking about emotions and thoughts this morning, especially with uh, Aroldo. He talked a lot about these emotions that Paul had to go through, or Saul had to go through. And we want to investigate this at a deeper level. We want to see how this relates to the scientific side, how it relates to our bodies. We have these emotions, we go through these emotions and thoughts, and this ha they have consequences on our physical, biological body. We want to investigate some of these things. So w what we're going to do is try to understand from the science point of view, under the spiritist light, of course, what this means. When we talk about a feeling or an emotion for science, okay, for science, it could be something negative or positive. It doesn't matter. It's still energy. For science, it doesn't matter. The moral component is not present. So I can think of something bad and it has a consequence because it's an energy there. When I can think of something good and it has a similar approach to it, the result is different because of the moral standards. But from the scientific point of view, it doesn't matter if something is positive or negative. We still study it the same way. And it all starts with a thought. When we think of something, it's going to produce a chain of reactions. That's what we want to investigate here today. Uh, this thought comes from something that I am induced to. Okay, it's what these words that you're going to see here. These are words by Andre Luis. Uh, so there's a mental induction that makes me think of something. Okay, produces that thought, and this mental induction has to do with the mental matter. Andre Luis makes it very clear to us, okay? Thought is matter. It's very clear. In a different way, it's not wood like this, but it's still matter in a different uh, way. So there's mental matter that makes it happen. If, and if there's matter, there's particles. That's what Andre Luis calls mental particles. So if we wanted to understand, don't, don't think about the names. They might be complicated, but uh, that's just to line up what we're gonna do here today. So if we want to study these uh, emotions, we need to study all of these things. In order to be able to study these things, we have to base on two pillars, okay? The pillars are these, the study of a quick, very quick basic study of subtle bodies and half an ounce of quantum physics. I say half an ounce because if you say I'm gonna talk about quantum physics, half of you are gonna be gone in seconds. And that's not it. We're not going to put any white frogs. We're not going to do any science lab here. That's not what it is. Actually, you're going to see it's very, very, very intuitive for people like us in this audience. Okay, so don't get scared. You don't have to rush out. Lunch is not even ready, so stick around. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, the way we're going to present this is in the reverse order. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, start with the thoughts. Okay. When we think of something, okay, this can be, it can take form in two uh, it can take place in two different forms. One form is what we call a radiation, okay, what is that? It's for example, let's say I'm just driving home, okay, and I'm driving in my car, I'm listening to the radio and so and so, and some thought just comes to me and say, oh, well, when I get home, I need to call my friend, for example. And that's it, and I come back to my driving, and my radio is playing, and that's it. It's a radiation, it didn't do any harm, it didn't do anything, it didn't change the universe. Okay? That's all it is. And we have lots of these throughout the day. That's a normal thing. That's one type, but there's a, a second type of thought that, it, that we call thought form. 
That's the dangerous one. It could be dangerous or not. Depends on the moral that it carries. Uh, the thought form is something that we sustain. For example, let's say I just don't like a certain person. Okay, and I sustain that all the time. And I'm thinking about that person that I don't like all the time. I don't like that person. Yeah, I don't like that person. Oh, let me do my homework here. Yeah, but I really don't like that person. Let me watch TV. That artist is just like that person that I don't like. So you, you're sustaining that with all your heart. We do this a lot. We do this a lot. And unfortunately, when we do this, it's on the negative side. We are carrying the negative energy. Very seldom we do this on the positive side. Okay, like, a, for example, prayer, group prayers and st uh, things like this. We hardly ever do that. We usually go for the, you know, the other side. But regardless, this is a thought form. This is going to start having impact. This is not a radiation. We're sustaining a form. Uh, uh, thought is matter. So we are creating matter and making it happen, basically. So we need to understand what happens from this point once we produce these thought forms. Okay? Andrea Luis talks about us thinking, and we can compare thought to like a campfire. If we set up a campfire, okay? Uh, in the dark of the night, let's say a very dark place, there's nothing around us, and we set up a campfire. If you're really close to the campfire, right around it, you can feel not only the heat, but the light, and you can pinpoint when it, where it comes from. Oh, it's coming from here, from the campfire. As you go away from the campfire, you're still under the influence of the fire, of the light, but you can't pinpoint anymore. And that's very easy to find out when you drive on the dark of the night, there's absolutely nothing. You, go, you start getting close to a city, you see, the, you see lights, but you can't tell, oh, it's coming from that point. But you're already under the influence of that light. This is what Andrea Luis calls the mental field. Okay? So when we think of something, we generate a mental field. When we think of something that is a, a thought form that we're going to sustain, the mental field goes wider and wider and wider. It has more impact. It's going to create problems if it's a, a, positive, a negative energy. It's going to create good things if it's a positive energy. But for science, it's just energy. So this is going to take form more or less. It's going to be more or less penetrating, and it's going to uh, have more or less impact depending on two things, according to Andre Luis, concentration and persistence. So as I concentrate more on this thought, its mental field goes wider. As I sustain more, as I put more persistent on it, it's going to do the same thing. So it can become really powerful. It, it, you know, some of these thoughts can have transforming power if they're positive, like prayers, like I said before. So let's see from this point what happens. So we are interested in studying these f thought forms that we sustain and concentrate and we put our energy on. When we think of something, this is a radiation as we see, or a thought form, but these are waves. Okay? These are waves that comes out of our uh, brain, our mental body. Waves can be in two different types. Let's say, for example, I have a string here and I attach one end to the wall and I have the other end here and I just go like this. And you can imagine, I'm going to obtain something like this blue wave here. Okay. Now, if I really go really, really, really fast, it's going to change. It's going to be more like the green up top. Okay? Now, if instead of attaching to the wall, I, say to a per I tell a person, go there and hold that. But you, you have to uh, hold it really hard. It's just a wrong click here. Hold on. It's going to come back. <laughs> now I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I press I pressed the uh, blank. Okay. Sorry. So what's going to happen is, if I tell somebody to take it out of the wall and just hold it, which of the two types is this person going to feel more, the blue or the green? The green. It's going to be harder for that person to hold it statically. Okay. Now, it might seem that we're going off here, but it's not. Science defines these based on what they call wavelength. The name is not important to us as spiritists. But they call this. Now, we can just looking at the picture, we can see that the wavelength on the blue wave is more than the one, is longer than the one on the green wave. That's why we call the blue wave as a long wave and the green as a short wave. 
we are interested in the short wave. If you go back to the 70s, late 70s, we had a, a type of radio called short wave radio. Okay? We would turn this thing on. It was just like a radio, a regular radio. We would turn it on. And we would pick up stations from Europe, Japan, Germany, different places. How come? They had no internet, no satellite, nothing like this. So how come? Because they were very short waves. So that shows one thing, the power of reach of these short waves. They go really, really, really far. So when I produce a thought, a blue wave kind of thought, I don't do too much. But when, I, when I'm able to produce a green thought, a green wave type of thought, it's going to do a lot more. So when do I generate one? When do I generate the other? We want to investigate that. OK, Andrea Luis tells us that these, uh, these waves, they will go, they will go here from uh, you know, very short to very long. We can think you know, very long or very short. Now, the very, very, very short waves, those would be the more powerful ones. The shorter they are, the more powerful they will be. The very, very, very short waves are not really for us. They are for angelical legions. We can't do these. We can only go to a certain level here in short waves. Past that, we don't have that ability. On the other end, very long waves are the animals, where they don't produce thoughts that make any changes to the universe, not, not something very powerful, very significant, very meaningful. Now, in between these two, that's where we are. And Andre Luis says, well, let's analyze you know, our powerful, more or less powerful thoughts based on three stages. So he divides in three types of vibrations. He calls basic vibrations, these are the longer waves. As I start putting more attention and more uh, reflection on my thoughts, it's going to increase its, its power because the waves get shorter. And the shortest that we can do as humans are the ones that I put deep, deep, deep emotions. It's the ones that are really going to sustain that thought really hard, with all my heart, all my uh, emotions. Okay? Now, let's see what happens here in these three cases here. So we're going to study vibrations. What are vibrations? Vibration is the ability to make the mental matter vibrate. Mental matter are atoms. atoms okay? So we are able to make atoms vibrate. That's all it is. Now, the atom, if we look at an atom here, this is an example of one. It's composed by uh, a nucleus, which is a concentration of energy, and other energies around it. Those are the electrons. Okay? That's what an atom is. When we are in basic vibrations mode, what we are able to do is take the whole atom as a whole, as a whole, and make it vibrate as a whole. I can break in. I can't do anything inside it because my waves are very long. I'm not thinking anything. I'm not putting any emotion on that thought. So it's a, it's a light thought. Let's put it this way. As I start putting more attention, more reflection on my uh, thoughts, it's going to change because now here I'm going to be able to take one of the electrons inside the atom and make it vibrate. We know from physics that when one electron vibrates, it goes over to the next orb. And when that happens, it emits light. That's where the aura comes from. So, you see, the ability that we, as we start putting more emotions, our aura is going to show. If we don't do much, if, we don't, if we're just in survival mode. Survival mode is just biolo biological. You can just be watching TV, not doing anything. You just want to relax for an hour or so. So you would be in vibration mode, basic vibration mode. Basic vibration mode is like the car in idle. Okay, the car is not supposed to be in idle. It has a purpose, which is transport me from A to B. But if I turn it on, okay, if I crank it up and don't do anything, it's in idle mode. It's not taking me from A to B, but it's operating. That's what the uh, basic vibrations are. So a little bit more attention, we go into this situation. And if I put on all my emotions, everything, it still doesn't matter if it's good emotion or bad. We're, we're not judging moral yet here. So when I do this, when I put all my emotions in it, I'm able to vibrate the nucleus. Okay, I'm able to vibrate the nucleus. Now, just think of this as, as a physical thing. If we had an atom right here in front of me, this is the nucleus, there are energies around it. If I'm able to take my hand and put my hand on the nucleus, I have full control on this thing now. I can do anything I want. 
that would give me full control. That's the idea here. When you put all your deep emotions, it's going to make you have full control of uh, the mental field around you. If it's something good, you're doing good. If it's something bad, it's going to do bad for those within the mental field, us included. Okay? So this is just the same slide, just uh, a summary of what I said. Okay, so going over to the next thing. Here's what Andre Luis says about this thing. Let's start getting some conclusions here. This is what it says. See if you can follow me here. We are emerged in an uh, ocean of subtle energy, and there are some surprising elements. That's interesting. That transcend the periodical table of chemical elements. So let's go in parts. What is this periodical table of chemical elements? Is that thing that we go in high school and we learned in hydrogen and helium and all of those that they, they dispose in a certain graphic way that we didn't like? Okay, it doesn't matter if we like it or not. What he's saying here is there are elements that are not in there. That means we don't know it all. We know almost everything based on our current science, but we don't know it all. There are things that, you know, at times we don't get the results that we expect because there are things that we don't know yet. And he continues, he says, in addition, there are some formations based on the atomic systems in different vibrational conditions. Okay, let's stop a little bit. We know science knows how atoms work. There are vibration forces and so and so. But what he's saying here is we don't know all of them. There are some different ones that we still don't know. So again, at times, you know, science doesn't get the expected results because there are things that we don't know. And that's what's making it very hard for us to understand to the scientific level thought because there are things that we don't know. The challenge is, is, is this, is trying to get to this point. Okay, so what we want to see is a, a little bit more practical. This is just what it is. Let's try to get more practical. So we're going to get a situation okay, to work on here today. And it's it not necessarily it's a true situation for any of you, but uh, this is the situation. Let's just say that three years ago, I got a new boss, and I don't like him. And I, every day after day and after day, I just don't <coughs> like him. And it's getting progressively worse. So we are three years now. And I decided that on Monday morning, I'm just going to go into his office and just tell everything that I'm going to tell. I'm just going to lose it. Okay? So this is in my mind right now. Let's see what we want to see. So I have a very strong thought form here that I've been feeding for three years. So I can imagine how deep this thing is. I have all my deepest emotions in there. All my short waves are going out and making damage out there. We want to see what the damage is. Okay? And the same applies for a positive energy. This is science. So we're analyzing the energy here. It's just easier for us to probably reference to something bad, unfortunately, because that's what we see out there every minute of our lives. So this is the situation, okay? Three years, I don't like my boss, and I decided on a Monday morning I'm just going to go into the office and just go with it, okay? All right, we need to understand first what, take, what takes place inside of me. Before, before Monday, before Monday, what's taking place inside of me right now, for example, let's say two days before it, it actually takes place? Uh, for that, we need to understand what this, uh, we need to go through a very light and quick study of the subtle bodies, okay? We know that we are spirit, very spirit, and physical body uh, that's according to Kardec. And Luis goes a little bit further. He takes the very spirit and he says, well, we can actually, for academic purposes, understand the very spirit and subdivide it in three other ones. Mental body, spiritual body, and etheric body. Okay, so that's the model that we're going to work on to understand what happens through these five bodies, if we can call that way, for lack of a better word, before I go to my boss on Monday and tell him what it is. So this is what, what we're going to do is study what happens inside of me. He doesn't know. He's in the couch watching TV. He doesn't know that's going to happen. But I know for three years. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see the damage of sustaining a thought form like this for three years, okay? So we want to understand. Okay, so we're going to come from the top where it all starts, 
okay, it all starts with the spirit, and we're going to come down to the physical level, to the biological body. Okay, all the way on the top. So, spirits. I don't like him. Okay, I decided when he joined the team, I, you know, the first days I didn't like him. A week later, I said, yeah, I really don't like him. And there's two things I can do. I can say, well, I don't like the way he manages work. I don't like the way he tells me things to do, whatever it is. So I could have said, well, let me have a talk with him. Let me sit down and say, well, this is, I understand you quite very well. Can you explain this? Can we go out for lunch and so on and so on? So that would be a choice picked pick up from the virtues buckets. But no, I decided to go to the vices bucket and then something else. And I sustained that thought form that I pulled out from the vices buckets until this day. Okay? So it was all my choice. It was not his choice. He just didn't even know. He just doesn't even know. It was my choice. It was my moral, my standard that made me choose what I chose. So the spirit creates this idea that I don't like him. I just don't get along with him for whatever reason. And he sends the message down to the next. It's like a production line, if you will. He sends a message down to the mental body. And the mental body says, oh, OK. I receive the information that I need to create a thought form to sustain because, you know, spirit's telling me I don't like this guy. And that's what's going to happen. The mental body is responsible for production of the thoughts. So it's going to go to the mental matter, arrange the mental matter to sustain a thought form. And it's going to keep it. Okay? It's like a, when you go to a story by a, a wall, uh, uh, a fr if you frame something on the wall, it's going to stay there. It's not going to disappear by itself. For that thing to disappear, you have to say, well, I got tired of this one. Let me put something else. If you don't do that, it's going to stay there. That's what a thought form is. Okay? So the mental body says, OK, I got it. I went to the mental matter, and I formed the thought form you wanted me to. So let me send this down to the next one in line. The next one down in line is the spiritual body. And the spiritual body is where the, the, the Hindu call the spiritual body, they call karmic body. That's for a reason, because it carries the law of cause and effect. It's all there. So the spiritual body is going to say, OK, I need to write this down. Write it to a right? I need to write this down. I don't like my boss. And Monday morning, I'm going to go in there, and he's going to hear from me. And it's registered. It's a lot. It's a lot that I'm going to carry with me because I decided to do so. Okay? So this gets written down on my history, my spiritual history, and it goes down to the next guy. The next guy is the etheric double, which is the outer part, the grosser part, part of the pair spirit. Okay? And this is going to carry, uh, this is going to take this information from the spiritual body and say, I need to make this happen at the physical level. I need to transform this information on the ledger that was written on the ledger by the spiritual body. I need to make this happen on the body. So let me translate the information and I'm going to stamp that into the body and send it out to the physical body. That's what it does. Okay? So the physical body gets this information and says, OK, I got this. And the physical body, we're now down at biology level. Okay, what, what, what is the physical level doing with energy that hits it? It circulates through the bloodstream. So whatever type of energy, whatever it came to the physical body, doesn't matter. The physical body is just going to have it circulated. Okay? That's part of the automation of the heart beating and so on and so on and so on. It's just going to do it. Now, what we want to understand is when this thing comes down from the spirit all the way down to the physical body and it hits the physical body, we sell our body, what happens? Okay. We want to see what happens when this hits the physical body. Okay, the physical body is a set of, uh, it's, it's a colony of 70 trillion cells. So what we're going to do is we're going to study one cell multiplied by 70 trillion. That's a lot easier. Okay, here's one cell. One cell has what we call the nucleus, which is this uh, pinkish part here. And everything else outside is called the cytoplasm. The names are not really important, but I have to use it to reference to something. So nucleus and cytoplasm. The cytoplasm has a lot of things, a 
lot of different things. We're not interested in any of them except one, which is called the mitochondria. Okay. What is this thing? First of all, one cell has several mitochondria. Not all the cells have the same main number of mitochondria. Okay? The mitochondria is what's going to do the metabolism of the cell. Okay, so uh, cells like uh, liver cells, which are responsible for metabolism in the body, carry a lot more mitochondria than skin cells, for example. Okay? What is this thing doing? Okay? What is metabolism? This thing is going to take glucose and oxygen. Okay, so it's, it's intake, glucose and oxygen, and it's going to throw out energy. Basically, that's the function of each mitochondria inside each cell. Okay, that's biology. It's not new, that's biology 101. Okay, now let's call Andre Luis and say, let's plug Andre Luis into this slide and see what he says about this. Here's Andre Luis in Evolution in Two Worlds. By means of the mitochondria, the mind transmits to the physical vehicle that it conforms. What is the physical vehicle that it conforms? physical body, biological body. So the mind transmits to the body all of its states, happy or unhappy. Okay. It's like this. On that far on that side, I put unhappiness. Far on this side, I put happiness. And everything in between. These are two extremes and everything in between. So all of its states get reported to each mitochondria. All explain and excludes what? Nothing. So if I subscribe to revenge radio, that's what I'm gonna tell them I'm in revenge mode today. If I subscribe to love radio, that's what I'm gonna tell my mitochondria today. Okay? So and this, this energy that the mitochondria is gonna before the mitochondria actually processes. You know, it's going to ask, hey, hold on, I got oxygen, I got glucose, hold on. What's the condition up there? And the condition is, today you're bad, you're in revenge mode. And that energy is going to be carried out inside each cell. Or, or you're in prayer mode today, you're in charity mode today. That energy is going to be carried out inside each cell. It's going to be produced by ourselves, by choice. See, very clear. By choice, it's our own choice. And this is gonna balance or disturb the whole energetic cycle, obviously. It, it is our choice. So when we plug in Andre Luis here, there's a third component that's part of the input, which is my mental state. My mental state is gonna define how my body operates. Each of the 70 trillion cells. And you multiply this by 70 trillion, and you can see what the damage or the good thing can be. All right, now these are regular cells in the body. Now we have neurons, which are specialized cells. Let's take a very quick uh, look at neurons. Neurons are formed by, this is, This would be the, a regular cell with the nucleus in the middle, the cytoplasm here, and it has these, uh, these little wires okay, that come out. These wires are, on one side we have these dendrites, and it has like a tail here with axon terminals. What happens, this is one neuron. When we think, and, and the way our brain works, is uh, each neuron attaches to the other, and it forms like a big wire. Okay, these simple words. So, uh, the information got to flow here and everything. Now, why is it, what, what do we have to understand here in terms of spiritism, okay? because these are specialized cells. We already saw what happens to regular cells. Well, we have to look at these things here, these little uh, dendrites, they're called dendrites. A dendrite is something like this, it's, it's like a microscope. Very tiny, tiny, tiny stroke. And one of the interesting um, books that came out in 2001 is, is a science book it has nothing to do with religion, spiritism, it doesn't attach, the, the author doesn't attach to any religion. It's called The Quantum Brain by uh, Jeffrey Setnover. And he tells, you, he tells us a little bit of his story, his personal story. He was, since he was a kid, very interested in, in looking at 
things at the microscope and so and so and so. And you know, he goes to school, becomes a professional. But one day he goes to look at the conception uh, process on the microscope. And he sees the very first cell, the very first cell, the right after conception. And he's looking at it, and things are moving. It's hard to see, especially 20, 30 years ago when microscopes weren't that great. But still, you could see things. And he's looking at things, and suddenly, this is what he, he reports on the book. Suddenly, he sees there's a lot of little structures, like straws, that come up. And they stay up. The cell separates absolutely geometrically, and these straws go down. And now we have two cells. Then later on, this one cell does the same thing, and this one here does the same thing. That's four and eight and so on and so on. And he gets very frustrated because he doesn't have an explanation for that. What is this thing? What are these straws? They're all like antennas waiting for information. So he becomes a professional. He goes to study a lot of different things. He studied math and physics and uh, medicine, biology. He studies a lot of things. And in the book, he comes to the following conclusion. The only explanation that he can find, this is 2001, it is these straws are little antennas. These straws are dendrites. And they are waiting for information from a higher level. He writes that in the book. It's a science book. And it didn't make a lot of people happy in the science world because it's very challenging for them. Very challenging. But he had the courage to write it down. And because he's not attached to any religion or anything like this, he says, some people will call God, some people call spirit, some people call bio essence, and so on and so For us, it's the spirit. So this is science. This is science. Now let's call in Grand Louise and see what it says about this. Okay. Here's Grand Louise again. Same book, Evolution in Two Worlds. The nucleus, that he's talking about the uh, neurons. The nucleus is surrounded by protoplasm housing a bunch of other things that we already saw. Um, and a brownish pigment, okay? So this is inside, a brownish pigment, tightly related to the spiritual body. So there's a connection between each one of these things and the spiritual body, which is a karmic body, okay? Having an extremely important role in the sustainability of the thoughts. Did we talk about sustained thoughts? We just did, right? Sustained thoughts for two years, I don't like my boss, and so on, and so on, and so on. What happens here is, this is already existing reality for me. It's in my brain. I don't believe in that. He doesn't know. It's not part of his reality. It's part of mine. So I already went there. You see, I'm going to do it on Monday morning, but I already went there and did it. And I already put my finger on his face and I already told him what, I, what I'm supposed to do on Monday. It already happened for me. It's all done. I'm just going to reproduce what I already created with my thought forms. So my physical body is already living that reality. It's reality for me. It, it isn't for him yet. Now, very interesting here, because it, uh, and this thing, this, this substance is more of it, uh, it, it, it's a more quantity as you get older. So that gives us the impression that you have denser and better thoughts when you are older than us. It's interesting. It is true. Okay, he continues, same paragraph. In addition to this, there's another substance invisible in the cell during activities. So if science looks into the microscope, they don't see it. It's invisible during the cell activity. And which spreads throughout the cytoplasm and the dendrites. Dendrites are little stalks, okay? So this thing that we don't see goes into the dendrites. But is it revealed by the use of basic colorants? What does it mean? For example, let's say um, I need to do a, uh, detect if my uh, urine has some substance. The way we do this is we take the urine and we drop something that is red, for example. If it turns green, the substance that I'm trying to find out is present. If it doesn't, it's not. Those are colorants that uh, biomedic people use to detect things. So this substance is detectable. We don't see on the microscope, but it is detectable through colorants. So it's something that we can prove the existence of. That's what Andrea Luis is telling us. And so this substance represents psychic nutrition. What did Jeffrey Satin over say? It looks like something that comes from another dimension. Feeling the information. That's what it is. That's the link right here. That's what Andrea Luis is telling us. 
That's how the sight information comes into the brain. It's through the dendrites. Okay? And when Jeffrey Sattler says that in the book, and you look at this, for us, it's very obvious, this is it, this is the link. But you know, he's being challenged with his information within science because, you know, science has to go through different methods than what we use it. For us, it's almost obvious. So that's why the existing reality is already taking place in my head. I'm already living it, and I haven't done it yet. So all of this, all this thing, that all these three years, this sustained this form, and all of this, it's only in my domain. I've been suffering this. My body is suffering this. My chakras are all misaligned because I blew up with bad energy. Everything is wrong in my body for three years, progressively getting worse. Okay? And he doesn't even know. All right, now let's say when this happens, when he gets out of my domain and he goes outside. Uh -huh. So I'm going to propagate this thought now. It, it was just a thought now. Now I'm going to really express it and tell him. I'm going to go Monday morning and tell him what I need to tell him. To understand what happened, okay, what happens, we need to do that half ounce of quantum physics. <laughs> don't get scared, don't run. Uh, the way the quantum physicists understood in the very beginning quantum physics is the same way they explained to us, which is very extremely intuitive, okay? This is what it is. We, before quantum physics, we knew regular physics, okay? In regular physics, we would take, for example, marble balls and, you know, put on a cannon and shoot towards a board, but put a slit in the middle. It is obvious, very intuitive for us that we get something like this, because I got a slit in there. It's no news. Anybody can, you know, uh, find that out. If we put a, another, uh, uh, between the boards and the cannon, two slits, it is expected to be something like this, okay? Now, thoughts are not marble balls. Thoughts are waves. So let's see what happens when we do waves. But waves are hard for us to work on because we don't see them. We don't see the thought coming out of the head. It's hard to do it. So let's do a midterm before we jump into conclusions. Let's do water waves. At least I can see the water waves in a pool. It's something visible. It's something we can deal with. So what happens when I do the exact same experiment and I put a slit, generate one wave okay, in a pool? You see the board gets uh, imprinted like that. It's almost the same thing, not quite, because you can see this board. The middle, the, the middle part is more susceptible to it, but the outer parts are also feeling the impact. That's the mental field. They feel less. As you go away from the middle, they feel less, but they feel in a regular uh, marble ball, they didn't. Okay? What happens when I put a second, uh, a second slit? Okay, so let's see what happens. The, the wave comes in and it's going to split, okay? And it's going to generate a pattern of interference. At times, these two waves offset themselves. At times, they combine, okay? And I get something like this. So look at the, I'm going to use the word damage because it's easier for us to understand. If this is bad energy, look at the damage that I did on the board with two slits compared to one. It's a lot more, okay? Now that we see how waves are, let's do the real waves, okay, the thought waves. Let's bring them in and see what happens. So one slit, I'm gonna have the same thing in the middle, okay? Now I'm gonna put two slits and see what happens. And it's gonna behave exactly as the waves in a water pool. Very same thing, I get the very same results. Okay, what does it matter to us, spiritists? What does it have to do with us? Each one of these slits is a mental field when I think of something myself, okay, I produce a certain impact. When I bring somebody else that aligns with my thoughts, the, the impact doesn't double. It is a lot more. If I bring a third slit, a third person, it's even worse than four and five and so on and so on. So, so if you do, for example, prayers, group prayers, you can imagine, you know, how good this thing is going to be. Right? because we're gonna have a lot of slits, everybody praying. And if I go, I have this thing that I'm gonna talk to my boss, and I go to somebody that works with me and says, I really can't take this anymore. I'm gonna go and tell this guy on Monday I can't take this anymore, and this person is gonna align with me, say, is gonna say, oh yeah, you should do that, yeah, no, I'm for it, go, go, go. 
And then somebody else, I heard you guys, yeah, go, go now, go, go, go. You see, I'm adding slits. I'm adding just mental fields. They are getting uh, worse and worse. They're going to be doing more damage than just me alone. So when we speak bad about somebody and three other people join, that's what's taking place. Okay, be aware. Okay. All right, so it's all a matter of choice. I decided to go to my vices bucket to start it all, okay? But I could have been to my virtues bucket and did all different. It's all a matter of choice. It's all in my, in my spirit. It is what I decide. Nobody decides for me. Before I think what I thought, what was the thought? It was a possibility. It could be something good, it could not even exist, it could be something bad. It is my choice. I chose to be this way and I have to deal with the consequences. Okay, isn't that what Spiritism teaches us? Yes, okay, and it's, it's no news for us. Okay, so for example, in the example that I was saying, I'm gonna go to my boss and I'm gonna totally disrespect him and tell him things and all of this and all of that. Now, before that takes place, something happen within my own domain, right? What happened? I just told, before I tell my boss, I hate you, okay? Before Monday, I just told my 70 trillion cells, I hate you all. That's what each cell is reading from me as a spirit. I hate you all. I don't think uh, Jesus came here to tell us how to hate our bodies. Quite the contrary. So we need to stop doing these things. We need to understand what takes place in our own domain. What we do to others happens to us first. Here's the explanation. It isn't a joke. It isn't uh, quite, you know, plain words. We're not doing this. This is for real. This is here, the explanation, okay? All right, so if we can take three things out of what we spoke today in three words, very simple. First of all, think about the mitochondria, capturing your mental state and telling each cell of your body what to do, okay? Number two, think about the dendrites, picking up your existing reality, what you're gonna form in your brain, the reality that you're gonna live comes from the dendrites picking up information from the spirit. So if you think of hitting somebody on the street, you're already doing that. And your 70 trillion cells are already suffering because you're doing that to each one of them. And lastly, think about the panel, how much we can impact things and people by thinking what, you're th what we are thinking, and even worse, having people join us. So let's just do the other way around. Let's just do prayer, love. Subscribing to Radio Revenge is going to bring a lot of other subscribers. They're going to join us, and that's no fun, okay? So thank you very much. Have a good day here. Thank you.